So, uh, you know, I decided to enter into this race back in December of 2014. At the time, I was really discouraged with what happened with Prop G and also with what happened for democracy with uh, the compost and chew race because I felt like it really epitomized this idea of democracy as a blood sport and a money sport. And I believe in democracy. I'm one of those people. You guys are those people as well where I actually want to be able to use the system to shape the system and be able to uh, promote new ideas and to hold our leaders accountable and if they're not being accountable to actually challenge them. And so I decided to run thinking at that time that Amiano or Leno might run and I started off with a ranked choice voting strategy from day one. I said Tom Amiano can be your write-in, you know, we can go back to that idea because um, I didn't know who was going to run and I knew that if I wasn't running that I would feel a sense of despair and I would feel a sense of outrage about what's happening to the city. So luckily I am running because I can channel all that energy into what I want to do which is co-creating solutions and I'm still using that ranked choice voting strategy. I was able to work with uh, uh, Stuart Shuffman and Francisco Herrera to align on a vote one, two, three to replace Ed Lee strategy. And even if you don't name names with this process that you do, I doubt that it sounds like you're probably not going to vote to endorse Ed Lee, but maybe even just a vote one, two, three to replace Ed Lee. Um, you know, I'm saying, of course, myself first, um, Francisco, and then Stuart. And I really think we actually have a chance because there are so many people that are undecided and are upset with what's been happening. You know, one of the, the great things I can say now about this race is I actually got to meet Ed Lee a few weeks ago, um, or I guess it was more like a month ago now, in front of Ella Hill Hutch, and it was for National Night Out, and I saw him, and so I went over to him and said, Ed, you know, Mayor Lee, what do you think about uh, Jane Kim's Eviction Protection Act? Because he's been saying since January that eviction protection is his number one issue. And then he said it at the Trans March and he said it at the opening of Jazzy's Place, right? So I asked him, what do you think of that? And uh, he said, did she finish writing it yet? And I said, she introduced it to the Land Use Committee a week and a half ago and there were two neighbors behind us and when you drove away in his car, they said, he just dodged that question. And that's what we're used to. And then we have this Super Bowl push out. We have him saying that his legacy is going to be a warrior stadium when we're in the midst of a climate change crisis, a homelessness crisis. I would posit that it was the policies that happened, the economic policies, the, the change in the payroll tax, the Twitter tax breaks that added 100,000 jobs to the city, which sounds good on paper, and yes, a lot of things didn't have to get cut, but at what expense? Because the question is, how many of those 100,000 jobs went to people who were unemployed or underemployed before the recession? And if we actually had, if I were mayor, we'd be doing a report on that, and we'd be figuring out, you know, right now, you know, I spoke about an issue on, uh, on Mission Street. There's, they want to put office space, they want to rezone for office space where there are these studios. Um, artist studios and so when I went to the Planning Commission I said this is a real issue because how many of those are actually going to go those jobs are going to go to people who need to be employed in San Francisco where the housing crisis was caused by the economic policy of, of this mayor it's not caused by the progressives because we were the ones who were actually building housing you know when the economic collapse happened you can go all the way back to Glass-Steagall and see how you know the 2008 crisis made Lennar not able to actually have the financing they needed to start building and it was interesting you read an article back in 2008 about Lennar and they were saying I wonder how we're gonna sell these homes you know you can actually read that article and then we have the, the collapse and now these homes are in demand and so we really need to be excited. I mean, I'm telling you all this stuff that you probably already know, but I just want you to know that I've done my research. I have the analysis of what's been going on and I have plans and ideas that I've been putting out there. You know, I'm the Facebook mayor in a sense because I put out my platform and ideas and I invite people to, to uh, comment upon them. And sometimes, you know, people can't even believe that I am so open about things, but that's what I do. You know, I started a nonprofit called Neighbors Developing Divisadero, 
where instead of just saying no to development we didn't want to see and the Chase Bank that was coming in and displacing local businesses, I started a nonprofit to say, let's say yes to inclusive, culturally enriching and sustainable development as neighborhoods. Let's get on the front end of this and figure out how dense do we want our neighborhoods? What, need, what do we need to do to support sustainability in that way? Um, I'm excited about what we could do with Bal Balboa Reservoir with CCSF being the top uh, issue, you know, we have to be able to create a plan that supports, what's that? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and, and it also, you know, creating some industry that might tie in with CCSF students. We need to create these pathways to prosperity. I want to be excited about my city. Do you guys want to be excited about your city for the future and to say that we have an eco city of the future plan? You know, Truman in 1949 came out with this housing act and uh, you know, it got co-opted by the real estate associations and national, you know, the Republicans and then it turned into redevelopment in the western edition and it was awful. But we need a site a set on a you know, 2049 plan for the future of San Francisco and you know, God willing, we get Bernie Sanders in there and we actually can do this from the yeah. national to the neighborhood. So we're gonna go ahead and open up this for questions. Who has questions for our candidate here? Yeah. So I'm really excited to hear you speak. I heard you on the radio, but yeah. I don't really know anything about you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something about your background, what you did before yeah. you started running for mayor? Sure, sure. So um, born in Berkeley, raised in San Jose, first in my family generation to go to college went to city uh, to De Anza Community College, UC Santa Cruz. While I was at Santa Cruz, this will give you a sense of who I am, I, it wasn't enough for me to sit in the classroom and learn about race, class, and gender of sociology, which I loved, but I did three independent studies working at a Planned Parenthood, a Boys and Girls Club, and trying to figure out how to support low-income parents with uh, preschool uh, support while I was still an undergrad. And I've done education work, public speaking, research, strategy. I went to SF State for a master's degree. I started off in public administration, but then ended up being the last person to be able to do interdisciplinary studies at SF State. And I combined nonprofit management, instructional technologies, and organizational development. And while I was there, you know, I actually saw that there was a need. We had all these amazing brains in the nonprofit classes, but we would do these hypothetical exercises for class projects. And so I thought, why don't we actually harness this and actually support real organizations in the community? So I initiated, helped fund, and I developed the whole thing uh, with a former professor called the CBO Support Project. It's being offered for the third time in the nonprofit program at SF State. And we've already helped 12 nonprofit organizations, including Mission Hiring Hall and a bunch of others. Um, and that's the kind of thing I do it, you know, and I did it, you know, I got paid pretty much a dollar per hour that I worked on it because I worked on it so much and got like $3,000 to do the whole project. But that's the kind of stuff I do. I, re, you know, I started a nonprofit, reactivated a community garden, built up a 900 person mailing list in my neighborhood. So, you know, I so truly believe in democracy. I have unshakable values that are rooted in social equity and social justice. And I just think the most amazing thing would be, you know, I saw John Avalos debating Ed Lee at the Castro Theater, and I wanted John to be saying more about, tell him about the transfer tax. You know, you're the one who brought money into the city with the transfer tax that Ed Lee didn't have to cut. And Ed Lee's taking credit for your process of the participatory budgeting. John, say this, this. <laughs> now I would get to be on that stage potentially, and I'd get to say the things that need to be said to Ed Lee. That's all the time we have for questions. Okay, thank yeah, you so thank you everyone. Thank you. And uh, think twice, vote wise. Vote one, two, three to replace Ed Lee. Francisco's wonderful. Stuart Shuffman is wonderful. And, you know, I think that, you know, some people might be scared about Stuart too. You know, if, what if he did become mayor? But <laughs> Stuart knows what he doesn't know and he trusts in the progressive leadership. So I, I would just put that out there. It's not something to be scared of per se. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>